All right, class, let's continue our discussion of diseases of the nervous system. Up next on the docket, we have rabies. Rabies is a very slow disease. It's very um, mild in its initial manifestation, but it's very progressive at the same time. It will continue to progress in patient populations and is almost always fatal. It's also a zoonotic disease. By zoonotic disease, I mean that it's transmitted to us from animals. Generally speaking, we as human beings are going to contract rabies when we are bitten by an infected animal. Rabies almost always ends with fatal encephalitis, fatal swelling of the brain. There are some very some distinct pathogenic symptoms or pathogenies and symptoms associated with rabies. Rabies is a disease that's distributed worldwide and it's, well with the exception of a few companies, is going to result in very rigorous animal control for the protection of humans from animal bite. Some of the signs and symptoms of rabies include first that long incubation period of one to two months. So after the patient is infected or inoculated with the, the virus, depending on the severity of the bite and the initial dose of the virus, it can take up to two months for the patient to start to manifest symptoms. The prodormal phase it will start with some fever, some muscle aches, some nausea, headache and fatigue, and some other just general malaise, some non-specific symptoms. You know, you just feel terrible. And it'll continue to progress. Until recently, humans were never known to survive rabies. Up until recent history, being bitten by a rabid animal was a death sentence. And granted, a slow death sentence. You had a, you know, at least several weeks to get your affairs in order, but it was still a death sentence nonetheless. So, the moment an infected animal saliva penetrates your bloodstream, you are infected. That's how the in initial infection occurs. The virus can occasionally be inhaled or through an aerosol or be inoculated through the membrane of the eye. Let's say the saliva from the infected animal gets on your hand and then you itch your eye. That's another potential method to get it into your body. But overwhelmingly, it's when the rabid animal bites the human. This virus is going to remain viable up for a week at, at the trauma site, where it's going to continue to multiply, and it gradually will start to enter into nerve endings and advance toward the ganglia, and then up the spinal cord, and eventually to the brain. After that virus can multiply in the brain, it will travel to the eye, the heart, and oral cavity, and this cycle is completed once that virus replicates within the salivary gland and is shed within the saliva to potentially go to another victim. Clinical rabies is going to go through several distinct stages. It ends almost always with death unless the patient is immediately vaccinated after being bit. It's very important that if a patient is bit by a wild animal that could potentially have rabies, that the patient receives the rabies vaccine before symptoms start to manifest themselves. Always err on the side of caution. The rabies vaccine is a lot cheaper than funeral expenses. The virulence associated with the rabies vaccine is, or the rabies virus is generally speaking fairly high. This virus is an enveloped, has an enveloped glycoprotein that is going to help make it be able to move throughout the CNS and invade several neural cells. This is a virus that's capable of penetrating that blood-brain barrier because of those special glycoproteins that are within its cell or within its viral envelope. Typically, this virus is going to be stored in reservoirs of wild mammals. So if you are bitten by a wild reptile, you don't necessarily need to worry about infection with the virus, but if you're bitten by a wild mammal, then you need to worry about it. Um, here in Minnesota, we have bats, skunks, and occasionally raccoons as the primary animal vectors for rabies. Depending on other parts of the country, though, we could have dogs, badgers, or cats. Even if the animal is domesticated, it still can potentially transmit rabies. Worldwide, there are total, the total death rate from rabies, or total number of human rabies cases, it's approximately 55,000. But a very, very tiny number of those cases occur within the United States. Majority of those cases that are transmitted to humans in the United States come from bats, 
Every once in a while, rabies will occur in wild animals. Well, within dogs, rabies has been vastly declining because within domesticated dogs, getting vaccinated against rabies is part of the regimen that you put your dog through when you bring it to the vet. If we look at the animal rape and in the incidence of animal rabies within the United States, so if we look at the epidemiology of animal rabies, the most common wild animal reservoir has been changing throughout the United States. It used to be foxes and then it was skunks and then now it's currently raccoons. There's also some regional differences as well. Within California, rats and skunks and bobcats are big reservoirs. Within the East Coast, it's raccoons and Texas is coyotes. To diagnose the presence of the rabies virus, there needs to be multiple tests done. We can do reverse transcription via PCR from the sal salivary samples. We can also use some detection methods with antibodies. We can use some immunological methods, or we can perform a skin biopsy and check it under the microscope to see if there's a characteristic histology that's associated with rabies. So if you were bitten by a wild or stray animal, that typically is going to demand an assessment of the animal, meticulous care of the wound, and treatment with the vaccine. Many times these animals are going to be put into observation to make sure that the animal does not have rabies. And if the, after that period of observation, if the animal exhibits no signs of rabies, the animal may be allowed to live. Oftentimes, though, the animals are going to be put down if they show a predisposition towards biting human beings. A combination of both passive and active exposure immunization is successfully indicated to treat individuals that are exposed to rabies after being bit by an animal. So that wound that's been infused with the rate, um, the wound itself will be infused with immunoglobulin designed to bind to the rabies virus. This globulin will be injected intramuscularly and will provide immediate systemic, perfect, systemic protection. A follow-up vaccine, though, that's based off of human diploid cells is also going to begin at the same time as well. And if you're an individual that's in a high risk, you're exposed to lots of animals, let's say you're an animal handler, a veterinarian, somebody that works in animal husbandry, you should also receive three doses to protect it, of this vaccine to protect against exposure, just preemptively get vaccinated against rabies. Here is a map showing the primary carriers of rabies throughout the United States. Here in Minnesota, we have lots of skunks. And since they're speckles, we also have lots of bats, skunks. And I'm speaking from personal experience. I've also witnessed a couple raccoons that have had rabies. And generally speaking, it's not a pretty picture. The, Causative agent of rabies is the rabies virus. It's transmitted via bite. The best method for treatment is to receive the vaccine immediately after getting bit. If you do not, generally speaking, it results in death. So, concept check class. The most effective treatment of rabies is A, antibiotics, antivirals, vaccination upon probable exposure, or vaccination only if the symptoms appear. You can go ahead and rewind the video, or you can pause it and check your PowerPoints and or textbook to get me the answer. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is C, vaccination upon probable exposure. So generally speaking, most individuals in the United States are not vaccinated against rabies until they are bitten by the wild animal that may potentially have rabies. If you have any questions about this material, please feel free to post them to class discussion boards or shoot me an email. Happy studies.